That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about New Order, the sixth film directed by Michel Franco, uh, which premiered at the 2020 Venice Film Festival, where it picked up the Grand Jury Prize. Uh, Neon is releasing it theatrically May 21st, 2021. People want us to say how we feel about the film before we spoil it. Okay. So I thought it was excellent. Yeah, I loved it. Okay. So, the director. Michel Franco. Uh, he's kind of a provocateur. Uh, I know people that love and really dislike uh, his output. Uh, his first film, Daniel Iana, uh, is about a brother and sister that are held at gunpoint and forced to have sex with each other and kind of the resulting trauma after that. Uh, after Lucia uh, in 2012 was probably his breakout hit because it won the top prize out of Un Certain Regard at Cannes. Um, April's Daughters uh, was his 2017 film, which I also... Was, to me, I think probably his most mature and best film, Chronic, starring Tim Roth. Uh, and now we have uh, New Order. Okay, the basic story, it's set in modern time. It's set in 2021. That's modern time. Well, right? This, the. Sure, 2021. Uh, Mexico City. Mm -hmm. We find sort of like some civil unrest when we're introduced to a wedding party at some rich people's house, mm -hmm. and we see them interacting with guests, we see the domestic workers preparing food, serving. We find, uh, well, so the person getting married, her name is Mary Ann. Mm -hmm. She's played by... Nyan Gonzalez Norvind. Okay, so she's getting married. A gentleman named Rolando mm -hmm. shows up. He used to work for the family, but hasn't seen them in over eight years because he had left to start his own thing, which failed. Okay. So his wife is very ill. Elisa. And because of the unrest, they've had to evacuate the hospital she was in. So now she's at home waiting for access to a private clinic. But he needs 200,000 pesos to do that. So he's at this rich family's house asking for the money. And the matriarch of the family comes out. Rebecca. And um, sort of like entertains him but basically says like we haven't seen you in forever like weren't you supposed to go do your own thing like why are you asking us but she's like hold on let me help you so she goes to a couple of people and basically asks for the money in their pocket and comes back with a significantly smaller amount than what he needs when the daughter marianne who's getting married sees him she's very excited asks what's going on and wants to help so she goes and asks for money and her brother says let me take care of it so he goes outside and basically tells the guy, like, take these pennies and get the hell out of here and don't come back. Marianne's very upset by that. So she wants to dip into her wedding money, all the money that was given to her as gifts, but the code on the safe has been changed. So she's upset about that and decides that she is going to go where this sick woman is to try to help her. So she grabs one of the workers in the house, Christian, and they leave, which is important because when they leave, some of these like um insurgents insurgents like hop over a wall and basically like massacre and rob this party so it's a very violent um like 10 minute scene mm -hmm. while that's happening marianne and christian are out in these streets with people acting up when they end up she ends up finding well she gets captured basically by the people and they get brought she gets brought back to a compound where they have all of these people who I'm assuming they think have access to money because they're they're making them call out to their families for ransom money. Okay, they ask Marianne's family for 10 million pesos. They involve, the, the family involves some like friend who's close, who's like a military person. Well, he has access, he's a powerful political figure and he has access to uh, the head of the military. So they're working on that, but a month has passed when they haven't heard from the daughter when two of the insurgent people who are working feel like they're being slighted because they know the leader is asking for way more money than he's sharing with them. So they decide to hatch their own plan and they tell Marianne, look, we're gonna take care of you. They take her to a safe house with Christian and say, go ask her family for 800,000 pesos and we'll let her go. 
So that's an entire ordeal because now with all of this um, upheaval, the new order, the new order. So now it's under like mili- it's like martial law, like the military is in control of what's going on. And they have all these regulations for how people can leave different zones. So poor Christian has to do all this stuff to get a work permit to then go to the family's home to basically tell them, like, you need to give us 800000 to get your daughter back. They do it. But then, of course, the insurgent people are like, oh, well, then tell them, give us another million and we'll let her go. So when Christian goes back and tells them, the family then contacts the military guy and says, we think Christian has kidnapped her. So they set him up. They kill everyone. Like they, they end up capturing Christian and the girl going to the compound, killing everyone. And then at the end, the military guy sets it up so it looks like, in fact, Christian did kidnap her, killed her, and then he was killed. And then they, there's a public ex- execution where uh, we see his mother, like Christian's mom. Who, and so again, Christian and his mom were not involved. They were just trying to help. But that's the end. Okay. You were reading that some people in the community... Uh, well, Franco is a, you know one of those auteurs whose uh, own country doesn't seem to like him, but he has a lot of... Uh, he's held in high regard uh, on the festival circuit and in other uh, countries. And he's, his work has never really been well-received in Mexico, uh, but this has uh, received a huge backlash. Um, he's been accused of... Um, being racist towards lower classes. Okay, I thought this film did an excellent job of executing the message of the dynamic, but like highlighting the disparity in wealth and power, like globally, not just in Mexico, everywhere. And the dynamic, we can get into it because initially when we finished, I was very confused why the military guy would kill Marianne. Mm-hmm. But then the more I thought about it, I really liked that because it also shows that the military, just like if I think about the United States, it's like, okay, so the average police officer walking around, I make more money than he does or she does, but they have more power than I do. So they're, so it's almost like we're on level ground, but they have the advantage. So when we throw in the mix wealthy people, it's like this really interesting triangle where someone like me is at the lowest, right? So I think the military guy killing Marianne demonstrated his power over the wealthy person, but also prevents someone like her, who seems like she wants to affect change, Mm -hmm. from doing so. Well, because the wealthy people are always kind of uh, wielding their power uh, invisibly, right? Because it's even depicted here with the father telling uh, Daniel, the son, like, don't involve them, just just pay them off. We can afford that. Right. It's only when they feel slighted and they want to be bloodthirsty that do they go to the military? But then the problem is this new order, this military dictatorship following this coup d'etat is more problematic than the system that was in place prior. Right. Um, and I also like that... I, I disagree with it being this black and white mess of stereotypes and cliches because it, it's showing really how who's being eradicated are the people from both sides that are trying to do the right thing. Like Christian and Marta, played by Monica Del Carmen, who's an actress I like a lot. Uh, they, yeah, they have to be, they have to be the ones that are, are excessed. In this. Yeah, I didn't get the impression that this film was sort of Im- Im- implica- like implying that the lower class people are savages who will just at the drop of a dime or at any opportunity, you know, steal and take from those who have. I didn't think that. I just thought what I was thinking the entire time was there is this huge disparity. And at some point there will be a tipping point. And this film, this story is just one version of what that might look like. And I think also like my mom was a dom- and is a domestic worker and has been for decades. And I just keep thinking like while I was watching the film that, you know, often wealthy people rely so much on lower class people to support them in every way, right? Their Mm -hmm. employees and their factories or however they make their money, the people who work in their homes. But then these people also have a lot of, like a great deal of access and could like effectively ruin these people like they do in this film. And I thought that was super interesting. Yes. 
and well, very well done. It's it's very straightforward, very like like it's very on the nose. Well, interesting even that after this has happened and everybody's picking up the pieces and of course the wealthy elitists that have survived will be fine and continue to be fine no matter who's in power because right. they have money. But just oh, it's uh, Gail Garcia Bernal's mother uh, is the uh, groom's mom playing Pilar Patricia Bernal. Oh, that's her. So she's the one, and then that's his half brother Dario Yazbek Bernal, who is in Daniel Iana. Uh, as oh, the, so as for the real, uh, so for real rich people. Yeah, like these rich. <laughs> but I like that. I I I really love the scene where. Um, there's a nurse taking care of the ailing patriarch and this would-be mother-in-law is trying to make the nurse help her clean and she's like, no. No, that's not my, not my job. Not my job. But as soon as Christian and Marta make an appearance, she just immediately takes her. She's like, will you help me clean? <laughs> it's like they aren't going to change, I think is the, the cynicism here. It's such a great conversation piece because what's happening in this film, you know, everyone's wrong. Except mm-hmm. maybe yeah. like Christian and Marianne and Christian's yeah. mom, but I mean, I, I I think obviously like the insurgent group, the 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 violence and the killing and the stealing, you know, I, I it's not necessarily right on a very basic level, but so is how the wealthy are sort of treating these people on a basic level. So it's an excellent conversation piece. It is violent, and there are a number of moments where I was like. Oh my God! Oh, like they yeah. just shot, like they just shot this lady in the head, or they just yeah. killed that pregnant lady. So, if there were any gripe on my end, it's definitely not that anyone. I, I mean, do people really think the filmmaker is saying like all poor people are? I just think that's so stupid. Yeah, I don't think he's saying that. that. That's not the intention. The intention, I'm sure, is like to relay this message, like like this problem and a possible reaction to the problem. But it is very violent. It is. A lot of critics wanted to compare it to Joker. The, the anarchy at the the suggested anarchy at the end of that film, um, which I think is not a good comparison because it kind of takes, uh, you know that that's a in a fantasy universe and this is very much dealing with the reality of how these class disparities sometimes play out. Well, and that the the Joker is a singular figure who inspires people uh, to you know walk towards the chaotic light, and I think this film is really. Like, it just feels like one big organism reacting to, like, you know, something that's invading it. But and but the results of a few will always, always those who will be punished the most are the lower classes. Sure. Is that because it is worse for them? I don't think the Joker is like a terrible comparison, but um, I was thinking this felt kind of like if you mix like... The Purge. The Purge with like Parasite. It, there's no comedic com- component to this film, but I just thought that like the eeriness of people think they're so protected, but it's like, you know, like Biggie and Puffy said, more money, more problems. Like, you oh know, you, you have more people have access to you. Yes. So it's like these people who ultimately like robbed and killed your little party had total access to you. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, well, maybe we need to take a step back and think about like how we treat people, how we use people, what conditions we put people up under that make them feel like this is an option for them. It's just such, such. I think a, it's great. Well, and also the title evokes, of course, the New Order, the music group, and their lyrics from Blue Monday. How okay. does how does it feel to treat me like you do? Yeah, an excellent conversation piece. Shot by Eve Cape, uh, who dr- recently did uh, Bonello's Zombie Child. Also. Uh, did Franco's last film, April's Daughters, and one of my favorites of all time, Holy Motors, um, which you have yet to see, but... Well, I have like two minutes left. What would you... I had four out of five film for me. Four out of five. Is it available on streaming or... I we don't know. I don't know. If you're able to watch it, you should watch it with people and then talk about it. Yeah, definitely a conversation piece. All right, toodaloo. Bye. Bye.